Hi, Bethun. For the viewers, may we request you to please share your story in your own words. Absolutely, Dikshita. It's a pleasure uh, to be here on this call. And just to, to give a quick background, uh, right now I'm in the first year on MBA at the University of Notre Dame. And I have overall eight years of PMB experience, primarily into entrepreneurship and general management roles. And uh, yeah, like I have, I am a three times entrepreneur with one successful exit, worked uh, across India, US, Singapore uh, in various roles. But after eight years of primarily entrepreneurial experience, I thought I should uh, go and get an MBA, try to upgrade my skill sets, and also explore problem solving at a bigger scale within corporates. And so consulting is something I was interested to explore. That's why I thought MBA can be a good uh, stepping stone into consulting. So yeah, that's how my journey started. Uh, primarily, I would say it started around mid-October of 2020. I was pretty late, uh, so I would definitely not recommend others to follow my timeline, but it, my journey was mid-October. I was, of course, talking with the experts global team. Uh, the team was super helpful, uh, with, uh, Devyani, but uh, Akanksha, Anshil, Shailish, they were all a part of my journey and each of them helped, them, helped me a lot. Uh, but mid-October is when I actually signed up for the online GMAT program of Experts Global. It, it's a fantastic program. So uh, got around six weeks of time. My uh, Gave my first GMAT attempt on December 18th. Okay. Scored a 650, was dejected, did nothing for three days, just chilled out. But after the fourth day, I thought I should take another shot at it. So I gave my second GMAT attempt on Jan 4th, which okay. was pretty close by, did not get much time. I was able to score 700 on that. Applied to schools all across the US, Europe, uh, even even uh, like Asia, primarily Singapore and China. Um, I got five offers. Uh, one was from Mendoza College of Business, University of Notre Dame. I got a 100% scholarship from there. And apart from that, I also got an offer from Cornell Tech where I was getting $40,000 in scholarship. Babson offered me 70% scholarship. I got it to Oxford did not get any scholarship there and i also got into hong kong university of science and technology hkusc at 50 percent scholarship but evaluating everything i decided to come into uh, mendoza college of business okay that's amazing and uh, it's so good that you got scholarship from top institutes of the world so congratulations on that as well so in your Thank opinion you. what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference Sure. So I think, like, I'm sure Express Global uh, mentors give the same guidance. There are three parts to your application. One is, of course, your profile and your past work experience, which you can do nothing because it's in the past. The other two factors is one is your GMAT and third is your overall application in ACs. And uh, so GMAT has, their own, has its own importance, primarily if you're trying to get a good scholarship at a top university, uh, but also to take time out to really dig deep into yourself and craft your story and it does take a lot of time to find out your why's and why do you want to pursue an MBA and how can you leverage your unique skill skill set yeah. and to like jumpstart your career to the next level and also how can you contribute to the cohort overall mm -hmm. so uh, yeah it, it's it's important that you have if not the complete answers at least some part of the answers and then you can work with the experts global team to refine those uh, so yeah, it's important to focus on each one of these three factors yeah. uh, but the sooner you can get the gmat out of the way the better because then you can focus on creating your application and essays right okay so with the benefit of hindsight what are a few mistakes you believe you committed in the process the biggest was the timeline i was just rushing through things like i told uh so a funny uh thing which i re remember is that jan 4th is when I gave my second GMAT attempt and my Cornell Tech application was on Jan 5th. Mm -hmm. So literally, and I, I gave in Kolkata, so I had to rush back home, complete the application. Uh, Oxford application was on Jan 11th, Notre Dame was on Jan 12th. So I did not get much time, but I did receive the support of the Express Global team to also send in the ACs and help me with the ACs in a timely fashion. So okay. definitely uh, it should be a much more structured approach with minimum six months of end-to-end uh, -end time. If folks are applying for around one, then they should probably start six months before um, and accordingly. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, to primarily do a better work on the GMAT uh, for Indians and 
specifically 700 is not at the top of the benchmark so uh, actually indians and chinese skew the entire gmat score for the rest of the cohort uh, mm -hmm. and, and we are the highest scorers uh, and that's expected so the competition is extremely high so the better you can G do on gmat uh, the more chances of getting into much better college and getting a better scholarship mm -hmm. yeah that is so true so uh, going back to your GMAT prep phase, what were the main resources that you used and what advice will you give to the candidate? Sure. So I primarily majorly focused on Experts Global's uh, the online GMAT. I think it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, I was able to do six of the mock tests out of 15. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, just apart from that, I just supplemented with Manhattan guides, okay. specifically the Manhattan Advanced GMAT Quant. And then... Uh, some for the verbals, the SCSC guide. Uh, those those are the only things I could do in my short six week prep. Uh, between the first attempt on December eighteenth and the second attempt on Jan fourth, yeah. I just primarily focused on uh, experts globals guides and just did exercises right. where I knew I was weak on. So uh, that was all I did. All right. and, and so going going forward, I would definitely uh, recommend to uh, at least plan it out, uh, take mock tests early, know where your weaknesses are, and then uh, try to resolve those and, and do more exercise and preps on each one of those. All right. Okay. So what would you like to say about your experience and learnings from managing the application timelines? Yeah. So I think uh, before the application timeline, it's important that you mm -hmm. select the schools. Right. And it's it's an important process. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend everyone to do their own due diligence on that because everyone's journey is different. For example, if someone wants to go into a medical field or in that, even maybe John Hopkins is a fantastic college because they have the huge concentration there because of the medical college. So depending on where you want to go, be it consulting or finance, investment banking, uh, or maybe in product management, uh, those schools matter. So knowing your school is important. Of course, Experts Global Team uh, is always there to help you out. Uh, and so for, for me, the reason I chose Mendoza and in hindsight was primarily three reasons. Okay. I would say the idea center out here is primarily think of it as a pre exeter come innovation park. Mm -hmm. And I was also already working in the fourth startup. So I thought it could be a good support ecosystem for that. Mm -hmm. And that proved to be true. So I had raised $30,000 back in India, uh, pretty early stage. I started my startup back in uh, August 2020. Uh, so it was pretty early stage. But in the five months since I've been here, I was able to start from scratch, oh. pitch the idea, uh, gain some traction. Uh, oh. Last month, uh, I, I went through their pre accelerator program, oh. raised $1,000. Then after two weeks, uh, uh, pitched to an Indiana-based VC uh, firm. Okay. Uh, won $20,000. And then just last week, I won under $20,000. So in a matter of five months, I have uh, $141,000, of course, equity funding. And then my valuation of my startup in India was half a million. And that has now become 1.5 million. So I've tripled my valuation. Uh, so the Notre Dame ecosystem is really helpful for that. So that, that was one reason primarily I was attracted to Notre Dame. Secondly, there's a program called business on the front lines. So this is primarily, think of it, you work with the uh, most afflicted communities globally. And I think of it as a six month consulting project where you go into their uh, uh, those communities and they really work on some of the biggest challenges, including poverty, hunger, and gender equality. So like I am in that program, I'm on part of Team Puerto Rico, where we are primarily helping the one of the biggest uh, business school, uh, University of Puerto Rico, develop their business school and also change the overall entrepreneurial ecosystem across the island so i'll be traveling to puerto rico in in this in the break uh, so that was i i thought that program was fantastic and lastly notrim has a aim applied investment management program okay. where you get to manage an entire portfolio of 28 million dollars of non, non notre dame's uh, finance portfolio so you can literally trade on wall street and stuff so that's something which i plan to take on the second year so understanding all of these factors really helps you give a quick clarity in terms of why this school is a good fit for me. And this is helpful when you're interviewing uh, with, with the schools. So they know that you have done your due diligence. So definitely do that. And then uh, once you shortlisted your schools, mm -hmm. accordingly, uh, uh, 
start on your essays. I think 60% of the essays are similar, but then there are school specific essays. So get the meat of those essays, which you think are similar okay. out of the way first, and then focus on the specific school essays. All right. Okay. Thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, like you were talking about the interviews. So could you please tell us more about your interview experience with the B school? Yeah, sure. And I think, uh, my past work on my nonprofit. So I've been also by running my own nonprofit for the past six years in oh. Durgapur, where primarily we created East India's third largest medicine bank. And I think that part really stuck out to the interviewer, who was also happened to be the head of admissions at Notre Dame. And then we chatted on that. So I think Notre Dame focuses on how can we grow the good in business. So any kind of impact work which you have done really makes you stand out. And uh, and so. Uh, unconsciously I got an edge on that so I was able to uh, speak in details in terms of the work I had done on that uh, but overall it was primarily uh, they will try to understand more about your work more about how of a good team player you are how have you worked in environment where you've supported uh, teams or facilitated uh, groups uh, and shown leadership and leadership does not mean that you have to be a senior position to always show leadership levels. You can pretty much be in a large team and at your own peer group also show leadership. So primarily, uh, how have you navigated conflicting situations, leadership, teamwork, these are something which is asked. But uh, yeah, like, uh, it's more about based on your past work. So it like for me, the theme was entrepreneurship, because that's what I've done most of my life. But for different people you can do different things if you're if you're a doctor you can literally would have done fantastic impact work working at hospitals if somebody is just uh worked in the it sector they could have created impact by creating valuable software that has impacted millions of lives so you have to just find out how have you generated impact uh, and uh portray that story yeah that's uh that's really nice so uh would you like to share more details about your mba experience so far yeah, so overall, it has been a fantastic experience. Um, I think uh, COVID was has been a boon, mm-hmm. speci- specifically in terms of uh, employability, increasing employability across US, because uh, it's specifically US is now going through a phase where there is a great resignation happening, which means more uh, companies are looking for fantastic uh, uh, good candidates to to hire. Uh, and so a quick example of that would be until last year, mm-hmm. EY Parthenon, which is one of the top consulting firms in the US, yeah. Notre Dame was not even a score school for that. And, and this year, they opened it up to Notre Dame. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the firms, mm-hmm. especially in consulting such as LEK, McKinsey, BCG, Bain, who were earlier restricted to the top 10 schools, mm-hmm. are now reaching out to schools which are slightly lower in the ranking scale okay. uh, because they are looking for top talent and then okay. that literally levels the playing field mm-hmm. uh, because uh, as long as you have the talent and you can crack it doesn't matter uh, uh, even if you're going to a slightly lower rank schools so for example i got into ey parthenon uh, uh, like and i'll be spending my summer there in doing internship in the san francisco office wow, and that's i'll amazing. be interning with with mm-hmm. folks from Berkeley, Stanford, Wharton, Harvard. So it's all, in, it's, a, it's the same thing. And that literally gives a lot of boost because, uh, you know, just because you have not gone to the top 10 schools doesn't mean that your options are restricted. So I think that's a fantastic uh, boon which has happened because of COVID. Uh, because instead of physically going and chatting with the location offices, with the schools, which used to happen earlier, mm-hmm. it's all now Zoom. So uh, companies like EY, McKinsey, LEK, BCG, they can literally have virtual coffee chats and you can still interact with the uh, with with the folks at McKinsey BCG Bain and right. still like share your story and get a chance at an interview. Oh, that's amazing. So like, can you tell us more about your internship search experience? So during the MBA, what tips would you give to the future candidates? Like how should they go about their internship search experience? Yeah, yeah. be very intentional. Know what you want pretty early because the time flies by very fast. So the SEM or the mod, mod, which you call it, which is half a semester, starts in August. Uh And by August end, folks who are recruiting for investment banking, their recruiting starts. So you just come to school, 
Mm-hmm. And within a month, you're recruiting for investment banking. So investment banking is the first part. Mm-hmm. Most of their uh, internships are over by, I would say, early December. So and and then consulting starts. So consulting starts from December, and by Jan it ends. So uh, uh, you have to be very intentional uh, in terms of what you want to go into. And uh, otherwise, if you decide to come out here and figure out, you will face a lot of options because, of course, everything is open. You can go into product management or in general management roles, consulting, IB, or just corporate finance. Okay. But by that time, you you lose valuable time. So do your research during the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you're getting got into a school mm-hmm. and then speak with prospective students who are in the first year, second year to get an idea okay. what has been their journey like. And from that, try to figure out yeah, which stream or where you want to recruit into. All right. Okay. So according to you, what would be a few common mistakes that you believe all the GMAT aspirants and MBA applicants must avoid? Yeah, like I said, it's always good to get a coach, at least for preparation, and doesn't have to be a physical coach. Maybe having, knowing, getting on a call with someone who's an expert, trying to understand what materials are most impactful so that with the minimum effort, you can achieve the maximum output. Right. Otherwise, you can always flat you. Like you can study for like 100 hours and still flat you and not get a good score. And that impacts your morale badly. So structuring your plan of action is critical before you start the journey. And then always uh, coming apart from the process, taking a bird's eye view in terms of where you are Mm -hmm. and uh, evaluating yourself. I know it's much more difficult, easier said than done, but doing it uh, occasionally would help you understand that, okay, this is somewhere I'm lagging and there you can reach out to experts or maybe like you said, like students in certain colleges to really understand uh, from their experience because they have also been through the process. Uh, so the more people who have been through the journey you talk to, the more you understand how much of time you can save and effectively you can usually use your time to uh, for your MBA prep and for your application preparation. Okay, all right. So what would be your final message to all the viewers watching this video? Yeah, I think MBA is a big investment in terms of not only uh, monetary but also your time so know what you want from this Mm -hmm. two years or if you're doing a one-year MBA and if you know that trust me your MBA will be super super impactful and you can actually not only get a good job which I think primarily is the primary reason uh, a lot of people try to do an MBA but also develop your own connections and pursue other opportunities for me it has been startup for someone else it can be some other different clubs or some other different hobbies Uh, and and so you can literally shape or customize your MBA program as you want Uh, Mm -hmm. and most of the top schools offer you though that of those opportunities it's up to you to just uh, it's a buffet you pick and choose what you want and then once you know what you want then it's time for execution and you take it step by step complete the GMAT complete the application Mm -hmm. give a great interview and then you're in and the the sky is the limit okay yeah that's awesome and it's really inspiring like the amount of multitasking that you do and you're creating a a positive impact in the society you're doing your startup you're doing your mba and it's uh, just very very inspiring for all the students and i'm sure all your suggestions and tips are going to help a lot of other students as well So thank you so much for giving us your time and sharing your experiences with us. Congratulations on all your achievements so far and all the best for the future ones as well. Thank you so much, Dikshita. And uh, I'm glad if I could have helped in any way. Uh, uh, Yeah, prospective students can can reach out to me if I can guide them in any way possible. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to do that. Yeah, we'll definitely get back in touch with you. Sure. And kudos to the Experts Global team for all the Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic work they are doing. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.